Welcome to the class. In this class, we are going to understand what are the various effects of forces. Right? Now, we already understand what is a force. Force is nothing but force is the push or the pull which when applied to a body, it makes the body move, whether away from us or towards us. Now, one thing we definitely understand when we apply the force, it sets the body into motion. But is it the only thing that the force can do? The answer to it is no. Force can have various effects and we are going to understand that in the session. So let us begin by first understanding what force, what all force can do. So number one, a force can cause a motion in a stationary object. That means if a body is at rest, when I say stationary, it means what? When a body is at rest. So by applying some force on a body which is at rest, we can make that body move. So let's read that out. When a force is applied on a stationary object, it can make it move. For example, if you push a book placed on a table, it will start moving. So when you push something, you see that it moves away from you because it moved, right? Or let's say I ask you in the classroom, pull that chair for me. So you will apply the force on the chair, you will pull it around and the chair will again start moving. So anything which is at rest can put into motion by application of force. Now this is not necessary that all the time you apply the force, the body has to move. For example, let's say we are having a competition that who is the strongest and I give you tasks such as move the wall. Will you be able to? Let's say you start pushing the wall. So let's take an example. If you try and push the wall of your classroom, will it move? Definitely it will not move. It will take a khali to actually move it. But actually you cannot move a wall by applying the force. For that matter, even if all the students in your class push the wall, it will not move, right? So the reason is, it may not be necessary that all the force applied will cause the motion. So the force applied by all of you is not sufficient to move the wall, but still you're pushing, right? Your action for while you want to move the wall, you are trying to push the wall away. So ideally, you are applying force. So the force has at least tried to move the wall. So what did we learn here? One thing that very, th very, very important we learned that yes, force can cause a stationary body to move, but it is not necessary that a force definitely have to make a body move. That means if a body is in motion, force must be applied. But it is not that, that if the body is not in motion, force has not been applied. It might be the force is not sufficient. Right. Second thing that a force can do is it can even make a body which is moving to slow down or even stop. So let's just imagine your friend is riding a bicycle and you want your friend to stop but he is not stopping. So what you can do? You can pull at the bicycle from the behind. What will happen? Like this guy here is trying to pull the bicycle from the behind. It is going to slow down and the bicycle will eventually stop. The same thing you can see if you apply any of the opposite force. So if you apply a force in the direction which is opposite to the direction of the motion or the moving body. Then in that case what happens? In that case the body will slow down. So similarly, if we do any such thing such as applying a brake to a moving bicycle, it will slow it down and stop it. You might have seen that in cricket field, a fielder stops a ball. Otherwise, it will go for the boundary, right? So a cricketer, cricket fielder stops a ball by applying a force in the direction opposite to that of the ball. We apply the force to stop our bodies while we are running, right? These all examples set one thing clear that though we know that a force is required to make a body to start moving, the same is required for a moving body to stop. That is what a force is required to make a moving body slow down or stop. 
So a force may stop or even reduce the speed of the moving body. So we learn second important thing here that yes, a force can make a body move. Moreover, a force may make a body slower the speed or even stop, right? Let's go further and see what else force can do. The third important point here is a force can make a moving object move faster. So when we talk about a moving object such as, let's take an example, your car or a scooty. You might have seen that on a highway people try to go with the highest speed they can, right? How? Because they are applying the force. The force of the engine is actually making the wheels to run faster. So ideally what they are doing, they are making the force come into action so that their motion speed may increase. Let's take another example. Let's say you are having a cart puller in your area and he is pulling a cart, right? On a sloping road slowly, right? Now, if you come from behind and if you want to help the cart driver to pull the cart, you can help by pushing the cart from the behind. In that case, what will happen? The cart will start moving faster. And if that happens, you can say that yes, when a moving vehicle is accelerated or you press on the accelerator of a scooty or a car, it starts moving faster. That means when you are applying force, you can not just make a body move, not just can make it stop, but even can alter its magnitude. That means you can make it go slower or you can make it move faster. So a football player when hits the moving football, the ball starts moving even faster towards the goal. Right? So a bullet cart pulling the cart applies a greater force, the cart will move faster. So in all these examples, what we are seeing? That a force can make a moving object move faster. So what all we have learned? Number one, a force causes motion. Number two, a force can make a body come to rest. Number three, it can make a body slow down. Number four, it can make a body go faster. Now let's see, can it do anything else? Ideally, yes. We have learned about a game of football in which a player when hits the football, it may make the football go faster or if a goalkeeper just stops the football, it will make it stop. But we also have to see that in a football game, there are numerous players throwing the ball here and there to, from one to another player. So in that case, they are applying force for doing what? For changing the direction of the moving object. So when a cricket player or a football player is hitting the ball numerous times to go take it to the other player, they are changing the direction of the moving ball by angling the foot. The same thing happens in the game of cricket when the baller balls the ball to the batter, the batter hits the ball and by the force he changes the speed as well as the direction of the ball that happens in the games that we see, right? So we can say that the change of direction of a moving object, it may be a ball, it may be a bicycle, it can be done by applying the force, right? So for a bicycle, you apply the force on the handle and you know you can move your bicycle whichever direction you want. So you are actually applying force in that case. So we have learned another thing that the force can do. Anything else that force can do? Definitely yes, a force can change the shape of the objects. How come I can say that? You might have seen your mother kneading the floor at your home. What happens when she needs the floor? She applies force continuously to make the floor into the dough. So she is applying the force. Take an example of a balloon. When you put the balloon in between your arms or your palms and you push pressure, you put pressure on it or you apply force, the shape of the balloon changes. So when we talk about can the force change the shape, the answer is yes. If we imagine a spring which is fixed in the wall with a nail, when we pull the spring, it gets stretched and hence its shape changes. Similarly, when we crumple a paper plane, it changes the shape. So ideally, by applying force, we can even change the shape of an object, right? So let's 
understand the last important thing that force can do many many things but force cannot do one thing and which is that thing when we apply force we cannot change the mass of the object so by applying force we can change the state of motion that means we can make a moving body stop or a stationary body move we can change the direction we can change the speed that means we can fasten something or slower something and we can change the direction along with the shape and size as well but we cannot alter the mass of the body by application of force so mass is an inherent property of matter when force is applied on the object it does not cause any effect on the mass of the object hence we can say force does not have any effect on the mass of the body mass is a constant quantity independent of the force of the body so what did we learn in a whole we learn in a whole that force is an external agent which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion or the direction or even the shape of the body can be changed right so it can change the state from rest to motion motion to rest it can change the direction it can change the shape it can change the speed or pace of motion but one thing it cannot change is the mass mass has no effect the force has no effect on the mass but one important major thing also we learned while we were trying to understand that if we try to push the wall by applying the force will the wall move the wall may not move but your force or your action is still pushing so we understood that all the motions that we see around definitely require a force but it is not necessary that all forces are producing motion so here we come to the end of this part but there is more to forces what is it we first have to understand what are the different types of forces so number one here is a contact force now what do you mean by a contact force by the very term it explains to you which requires a physical connect for example let's say you are applying a force right you are pushing or pulling on on a body so when your push or pull is directly on the body or it is acting through a connector which may be rigid or not rigid that means there has to have a physical con contact between the application of the force and the body then we say it is a contact force for example we know frictional force come into picture when two bodies are in touch spring force is again a contact force we have to physically compress the spring for it to act third muscular force so i believe all the forces which act on a body directly or even through a connector which could be rigid or non rigid now what do you mean by rigid or non rigid rigid means tough for example a wooden block or a rod non rigid is like a rope which is not fixed but when we talk about there are connection physical contact between the applicant of the force and the body we say it is a contact force so examples the force of push can act through a rigid connector only right however the force of pull can act through a rigid or non rigid connector now this is very very interesting let's say i ask you to push anything using a rope can you push something using a rope right i think so you cannot but if i ask you the same thing to pull something using a rope you can easily do that so ideally the force of push can act through a rigid connector but the force of pull can act through both rigid as well as non rigid connector for example when we can pull a cart by attaching a rope that is a non rigid connector but the rigid handle of metal or wood can also be used for pulling but if i say push the cart will it be possible by a rope the answer would be no it is not possible by a rope that requires a rigid handle such as metal or wood right the other kind of force is called non contact forces what does the name suggest the name suggests when there is no connect or no contact required between the applicant of the force and the body for example there are other kind of forces which act on the body from a distance take an example you might have seen a magnet attracting 
magnetic material or iron pins from a distance does it require to touch the pins to attract it the answer is no or gravitational force anything without even touching the earth will come down to earth because of the gravitational pull of the earth which is also not necessarily contact electrostatic force the one which you see when you comb your hair or when you rub a balloon over your head and you take it to paper bits it is able to attract the paper bits even from a distance because no contact is required so the forces that act through space and do not make direct contact with the body are non contact forces the example is the earth pulls a small object towards itself from a distance due to the force of gravity which is non contact similarly a magnet pulls on small steel or iron object from a distance or a charged glass rod attracts tiny bits of paper towards itself all are the examples of non contact forces right so the forces which do not make direct contact with a body but act through the space are called what non contact forces force of gravity magnetic force electric force all are the examples of non contact forces they can act from a distance without physical connect or contact with, with the applicant of the force and the body right let's now end the session here and we will learn more about different types of forces in the next class thank you